your brothers and sisters in Christ. Have you ever betrayed God? It's an interesting question, isn't it? Have we ever knowingly betrayed Him? Done something we knew He didn't like, but did it anyway? made a conscious decision to put into plan and to follow that plan. Have we done that? Have we sinned against God in such a way? The answer is yes. Because in reality, every sin is just like that. There are many sins that catch us off guard, that come in the heat of the moment, that we instantly regret. But there's a lot, probably more than we would ever want to admit, where the idea, the temptation springs in our head. We think that would be fun, or that would be enjoyable, or I need that, or want that. And then we set into motion how we can get it. And we know that in order to get what we want, we'll probably have to look the other way, make some decisions that we know isn't too godly. But we do it anyway. Yes, we have all purposefully disobeyed our God. We have all purposefully betrayed Him because we haven't lived perfectly like He demands. How should God treat us? How should God think about us? Well, the answer is easy because we know what every sin deserves, whether it was planned or not. They all deserve hell. They all deserve to be punished with eternity of suffering. And that's scary. In fact, that's the stuff that nightmares are made out of. We don't deserve anything great from our God. We don't deserve a joyful day, a peaceful moment, a time to relax, a time to get away. No, we haven't deserved any of that. We don't deserve to have a a good family, good friends. We don't deserve to have good food, good clothing. We deserve the worst of the worst. We deserve all of our good stuff to be destroyed. We deserve everything to fail that we try. We deserve no love from God. All because we sin, sometimes even purposefully. And that is how God should treat us. But the reason why we gather around God's Word, the reason why we love going to church, the reason why we love God in general, is because He doesn't treat us as we deserve. We have a beautiful example of that in the parable of the prodigal son in Luke 15. Listen to how the father, after the son had completely disregarded him, said he wished that his father was dead, took his inheritance and left, and then squandered it. Look how the father treats this son. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him, and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. 
Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. The son realized that he had messed up. He even says that, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. And how true is that for us? But the father doesn't even listen to this repentant heart. He just shows ultimate love and compassion. You don't hear, now you have to prove it. Sure, son, you can come back, but now you're a slave. No, he completely restores his son. He puts on new clothes. He even gives him the family ring, which indicates that he is a son. Again, the son thought he should just be a servant, and he rightly should have been. But the father restores him back to, his, to being a son, a member of the family. It was as if he had never left. And they celebrate having him there again. We might think that's unfair, and we would be right, except it's unfair for God to do that for us. It's unfair that God would love us, that God would care about us. It is unfair, but thank God our God treats us unfairly, that he shows us that same love, that love that just loves, that love that restores, that love that forgives, that love that doesn't require anything of us, but a love that is full of compassion and that is unlimited. That is what grace is, a free gift. And that is what God gives us with His love. And because God is full of grace and mercy, the sins that we have committed, the sins that deserve hell, the sins that deserve nothing good from God, will not be treated fairly, but instead will be met with forgiveness and love. Because it was Jesus who took the pain, who took the suffering, the suffering that was ours when he went to a cross and died for our sins. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for showing an amazing love to us. We don't deserve your love, this is true. But you still give it to us. You still give us your love and compassion and mercy. And you forgive us every day. When we run to you again and again because we have sinned, you promise to be there to forgive us, to restore us again, so it, is if, so it is, is as if we had never left. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for everything. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And may the Lord bless your day.